Hey, welcome back to No Hype Beer Reviews. Unless it's your first time, then welcome. Please consider subscribing. If you do, hit the notification bell. Gilly updates. Really excited for today's video. Also sad, but mostly excited. Uh, Beer Scars here, Ross. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sad because it's the last uh, one of the 2020 Bourbon County lineup that I haven't had before. I have doubles of some of them, but um, I have a single, only to have this one. But also, it's like the last first time uh, of trying all of them. So, a little sad, but definitely really excited. Um, I'll try to be thorough. I'll read the box, all that stuff. So, if you just want the review, I would fast forward. Um, I just figure that way for people who maybe, uh, you know, won't be able to get this beer or have not gotten this beer, you know, I try to be thorough and really give you my thoughts, you know, so you can either vicariously live through me or like, you know what, maybe I will pull a trigger on trying to trade or buy one or whatever. So, anyway, if you want to go fast, Fast forward. Uh, first of all, I mean, the packaging, come on. Looks like a Weller bottle. Like, that, that's just cool, you know? Uh, in collaboration with our friends at Weller, Weller's Weed and Mash Bell yields some of the world's finest bourbons, but it also helps tell the story of the spirit itself. Founder W.L. Weller is credited as the first to use a, quote, wheated, end quote, bourbon uh, recipe rather than the traditional rye. He spent a lifetime educating drinkers about his new, quote, softer, end quote, and smoother tasting bourbon. Uh, finding a bottle of Weller bourbon is always special, but to enjoy a pour of the longer aged 12 year expression is a true treat. As such, we couldn't be more excited to celebrate this year's anniversary Bourbon County brand stout, an equally unique beer layered with those softer notes of wheat and uh, subtle nuances found in Weller 12 year bourbon barrels. Aged for two years. I'm going to assume this is going to be very wood forward and very spirit forward. Uh, the barrel was, again, that 12-year uh, old Weller bourbon. Uh, seller develops in a bottle for up to five years. It's probably, well, I don't know when it was bottled, but I bought it one, two, three, a little over three months ago. So, anyway, uh, nothing interesting on this side and the last side. Uh, brewed with respect for, wow, for tradition with unique... Let me start over again. <laughs> Slow down. Brewed with respect for tradition, with a unique story to tell, these barrels and beers are meant to be shared. I will be drinking this alone as my wife hates this style. Uh, back in 2008, Goose Island was lucky to receive 23-year-old weeded bourbon barrels from Buffalo Trace Distillery. After aging for two years in these rare barrels, that Bourbon County brand stout was bottled and became the first vintage of Bourbon County Stout Rare, 2010. Released on an iconic day, Black Friday, this set a new precedent in the Bourbon County Stout family of beers, all of which continue to be released on the day after Thanksgiving. To celebrate the 10th anniversary of our Black Friday release releases, our brewers teamed up with Buffalo Trace once again for this release two years ago. We filled the highly sought after Weller 12 year bourbon barrels with Bourbon County brand stout and left them to age yet again for a two year period. A celebration of tradition and continued collaboration. Cheers, the brewers of Goose Island. Got a little tape on it. Let's cut that. All right. Goose Island Anniversary Bourbon, the original, or Bourbon County original brand stout, or Bourbon County original, Bourbon County brand stout, the original. The, the words are, you read the, or, the words out of order, it's so annoying. Uh, the originators of bourbon barrel aging, uh, stout aged for two years in 12-year Weller bourbon barrels, which you're probably getting sick of me reading. Chicago made 2020 Imperial Stout, collaboration with our friends at Weller, uh, develops in the bottle for up to five years. So no tasting notes of any kind on here. 5.2% um, ABV, and this was uh, bottled June 8th. I think that's everything. Proper glassware. You know it's going to taste better. Let's get into the beer. It's dark black, but there is some brown cutting through. Actually clean the glass correctly. Um, it's like, parent, I'm going to knock this over. Um, actually, relatively big head. Finger and a half... 
dark mocha, tiny bubbles, small bubbles. They're starting to break up already. But like I was saying when I was pouring it, it's a dark beer, little bit of brown mixed in, but that is that is black, that is dark. Um, definitely looks like a Bourbon County stout. There are some legs when I do that. Um, not much in terms of, well, really anything lacing. You got that one little guy, but anyway, <laughs> let's get into, I don't even know if the camera picked that up. Let's get into the aroma. You can hear them, like the, all the bubbles really popping. Like it's definitely going down quickly at this point. Okay, I like the smell. It definitely is a little bit um, oak forward. Um, nice, not sour cherries, nice dark cherry note. Uh, definitely some vanilla. Definitely, like I said, that oak is coming through. You do get some roastiness of the beer but it's not fighting through as much as I thought it would, even with two years of aging. Relatively sweet. <laughs> I mentioned the roast not fighting through very well. Now I am getting more chocolate. It's not coffee-like. It's definitely in that dark chocolate, but because there's some of that sweetness and some of that vanilla, also coming across like milk chocolate. Some dark fruits, for, at least for right now, and it's been a while since I've had any Bourbon Counties. Um, it, it smells like Bourbon County, I know, shocker, with a little bit more of the oak specific. That sweetness probably is muted. I'm just trying to think what, what would be different or what is different, best to my uh, memory, my best of my memory. Nice caramel thing working in there. Smells good. Let's get to the taste. Cheers. Thanks again, Ross. A lot of stuff from the aroma in the taste, which might make this a relatively quick actual the review part of this. You are getting the chocolate, it is both milk and dark chocolate. Not like super, like 90% dark chocolate, like cacao dark chocolate. More like Hershey's Special Dark. Um, but there is some dark coffee there. Um, <clears throat> the vanilla, that caramel thing's fighting through, or not fighting through, that is there. The coconut is what's fighting through. There's a little bit of that. I was hoping with the extra barrel aging, I'd get a little bit more coconut. Um, definitely some of the spirit. And it's been a little while since I had... Uh, wheat bourbon uh, or wheated bourbon, um, but I, I, I am. Re it, it's interesting. I don't think I've ever had Weller's. I'm thinking of uh, Larceny. Um, it is taking my mind back to that experience, which is kind of interesting. Um, so it, it is pretty Bourbon County e. There is more oak. It's not as woody as I thought it would be. It's not as spirit forward as I thought it would be. Um, it is providing a little bit different of that bourbon note, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, it's, I like it a lot. It sits on the tongue well. That one I got a lot of chocolate covered, like berries, but not tart. Like you gotta take the tartness away from berries. Um, I mean, that the finish is long and it's chocolatey. Yeah, I'm really like this. I think I liked the birthday one better than this anniversary. I know it's like a big debate which one's better, but this one's landing well for me. Uh, weller for me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I, I don't like to critique it or something, like to try to find flaw. little black licorice, which is nice. I, I will say this. Um, I mentioned how the taste followed the nose quite a bit. The more I'm sipping it, the more I'm getting out of it. This is a beer, I bet you, I, like if I was doing a live stream for an hour, hour and a half, and I just kept sipping this, I could keep pu pulling out other things. Like I wasn't really getting that black licorice thing before. I, I'm totally getting it based on that last sip. It actually is kind of, even to make it a little bit more complex, it almost had a black licorice, and bear with me, meets um, fennel seed, 
very much in a similar, uh, under a similar umbrella of flavors, right? But those are two different intensities, and this is kind of like giving me both, which is kind of cool. So, uh, like I was saying, like, I think this is a, um, a beer that, you know, as I continue drinking it, it will keep, you know, making me think of other things that I'm getting, um, which is really cool and definitely, uh, uh, you know, uh, making me excited about the drinking experience off camera. But yeah, thanks again, Ross. I really appreciate it. Uh, have you guys had this beer before? What do you think of it? What do you think of the 2020 lineup? Uh, anything, everything related to this or whatever. I just love talking to people, so that's cool. Comment section below. Let's get a conversation going. Uh, check me out on Instagram and Untapped. It's no hype beer reviews about those places. So always please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, imbibe. Cheers, everyone.